good. Let's uh, let's style this sidebar here and get this with this dark gray background and give this this big padding around it, and uh, and then give this some extra margin here to make this work. So let's move on to our sidebar. Go back to your CSS and let's go to the layout section again. Let's copy this because there's going to be you know uh, quite a few styles for the sidebar. So we might as well. Uh, give it its own section so it's easy to find. So copy this comment and in under layout, give it some space, paste that, change this to sidebar. And here we'll start styling our sidebar. So we know the tag, the HTML5 tag is aside. So we can select it right away by uh, selecting aside. And inside of that CSS selector, we want to do a few things. So we want the background, we want the width, we want all that padding. So we need to find out what the color is. And we already know because we saved in our CSS what the dark gray is. And we could just copy that. Let's go back down to our sidebar. Here it is. The background is, let's try that and see if that's the right color. Well, uh, Never mind the funkiness of this, but I can see already that this is not the right color because this is the background of the social icons and it's lighter than this. So I know that I'm using the wrong color. So it needs to be the lighter one, which is actually just gray. So let's go back down to our sidebar here. Paste that. And what we know is we can use a shorthand instead of using six uh, digits that are the same, just use three and then it automatically translates that into six in the browser. There we go, I can see it's on the right track. We need to give it some width. And let's find out how wide it is. It's four columns as well, and so we know that that's 220 pixels. And there's 20 pixels right here that we're gonna want to have in between the uh, the column content and the sidebar. So let's start off by trying 220 pixels and just seeing what happens. Let's give the color of the text white just so we can see what it's saying. Okay, so something looks wrong. And the reason is because, um, well, let's try floating it and seeing what happens. So we didn't float it and that was causing an issue. It needed to be floated up to the the left here. I know it's confusing because it's actually up in the right, but um, if you read up on floats and how they work, floating it left is, um, it's it's kind of a confusing concept, but once you once you figure it out, it's, it's quite easy. So this is actually floating it left. Uh, so anyway, it looks like it's kind of there, but uh, we still kind of look a little messy here. There's no padding, and this is right up against the column content, and we want to change that. So what we need to do is give it some margin left of 20 pixels. Save that and see what happens. That looks good. And what we need to do now is give it some uh, padding. And the padding all around was 30 pixels. Okay, so we have the padding and the margin, but something happened. You can see here that the element is wider. It's it's all you know. It's not the 220 pixels that we initially uh, made it out to be. It's actually significantly wider, and now it's not fitting in its section. The reason why is because padding adds to the width of the parent element. So in this case, we added 30 pixels on the top, bottom, left, and right. And 30 pixels on the left, 30 pixels on the right is actually adding 60 pixels of uh, width to the 220 pixels. So now this element is 280 pixels wide. And that's not, uh, that's too big. So what we do to fix that is actually make the width you minus the 60 pixels on the left and right uh, from the width to make it equal 220 pixels wide. So 220 minus 60 
is 160 pixels. And let's just comment this out and put a little comment here so we can understand what happened. There we go. So now it's 220 pixels wide, despite it saying 160, because now 160 plus 30 on the left and 30 on the right is 220 pixels. So this is actually 220 pixels. And there it is, with its 30 pixels of padding on the left, right, top, and bottom. And we're on our way to making the sidebar look a little bit better. But we can see now, font size is off, the font weight of the headers is off. It just doesn't quite look right. There's no margins in between this widget and this widget. And uh, it's not quite right. So let's fix that. Let's go back to our aside tag. Font size, let's make it 12 pixels. And the line height of the text, because we're changing the font size, let's make it 18 pixels. So it seems right. So that's that looks a bit better. That's the right font size. What we need to do now is change some more stuff here. So let's go add another selector here, a descendant selector. Let's go aside and widget. So this is choosing the aside and its descendant, the widget uh, element. So aside widget. We're selecting the widget inside of any aside tag. So now what we're going to do is we're going to give the margin on the top and bottom 10 pixels and left and right 0. So now we should actually be affecting, oh sorry, there we go. So it looks like it didn't quite do what we're looking for here. Um, it, did, it did actually give 10 pixels on the top and the bottom, but it didn't really do uh, what we were hoping for it doesn't have the same effect. So we're going to use a little bit of CSS3 to select only the second one without adding any extra HTML markup. We're just going to use CSS to say find the second element in the sidebar and give it top margin of 40 pixels. So this is really cool. We can select that by going aside and then widget like the above uh, selector, but then colon nth dash child two. So I know that kind of looks like, uh, you know, funny and kind of complicated, but it actually is quite easy to understand. It's selecting the widget or any widget because it's a class inside of any aside tag, and it's wanting to find the second child of um, or the second widget within the aside element. So we can see here what it's looking for is aside and looking for the second widget inside of the aside tag. So here's the second widget. If we had say four of these, so if I copied this and I went two, three, four, so now we have four widgets and I make sure that I didn't do anything here. We have four widgets, just like this, and I only want to select the second one. I can do that by doing this, and I now will say margin top 40 pixels. So you'll see only the second one got margin top. I can make this a little easier to see by going background pink. Only the second one has the background of pink. I could do the same thing with four, or three, or two, or one. So you can see I'm using CSS3 to select just a specific element. So let's go back to margin top because we wanted more margin there, 40 pixels. Let's get rid of those two extra widgets. We don't actually need them. Save, go back, and that's looking a little bit better. There we go. So there's a few things you can see that's different. The headers have a very light font weight. 
and these social icons have more margin in between them, more spacing between them. They're not as tight. And when you hover over them, they jump up a little bit. They just do like this little one pixel pop up and it kind of gives a, a neat uh, effect. It gives you uh, a response to your action. You're hovering over it and you know it's, uh, it's basically helping you um, it's just the user experience is better. So let's let's do those things. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is change the font weight of those headings. And they're H4s, so back to your styles. Below the aside selector here, aside. Again, inside of the sidebar. Let's go widget H4. So this is a descendant selector. I'm selecting the any H4 tag that is a child of any widget that is uh, a grandchild of any aside. So it has to be in this order. I can't, this, this will only select level four headings that live within a widget tag that is a part of a sidebar. So this is very specific. Oops. Very different than just say selecting H4. So this way I'd be selecting only level four headings and that's not what I want. I want to select level four headings that are within a widget of a sidebar. So let's go font weight, uh, 200, very light. Font size, 20 pixels. Margin, zero top, zero um, right and 10 pixels on the bottom. So this is actually another shorthand. Uh, I don't think we came across yet. What this means is zero pixels on the top, zero pixels on the right and, and left because I stop at the third one, which means the bottom I want to have 10 pixels. So when there is only three, the order is top, right, and left, and then bottom. So if I were to say five pixels right here, this means that the top has zero, left and right has five pixels and the bottom has 10 pixels. So it's just another shorthand. And this means zero on the top, zero on left and right, and 10 pixels on the bottom. It's just shorter than writing that. Another way of writing that, but we don't need to add that extra zero. So there we go. Let's save that, see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. Actually, perfect. So now let's actually fix these uh, social widgets. Or sorry, social icons. Aside. Socials. Uh, a. If I save that, let's see. Hover. Oops. Top negative one pixel. So what I'm selecting here is uh, the an A tag. Um, when you hover over an A tag that is within a socials element inside of a sidebar. So pretty specific selector. And when I hover over it, I want it to uh, pop up negative one pixels. So let's see if that actually works. It doesn't. And the reason why is because these elements don't have a specific positioning. They need to be positioned a certain way. So let's position them relative. This just allows it to be able to uh, do sp some specific things. And this should now, actually, a better way of doing this is by writing and giving the, the A tag the position of relative. So it's always relative. And then do this once it's uh, hovering. So still not working. Um, and the reason why I believe, let's see here, maybe let's check our markup. Widgets, let's see. I think we don't actually have anything here with the class of socials. So I just kind of assumed that this that we gave this the class of socials and actually we need to add it so if you actually go down to your widget and give it another class of socials now 
this should work because now I'm selecting uh, a sidebar and it has to have a child of socials. So instead of widget, I'm selecting socials, so it's specific, and any link, give it the position of relative, and then when I hover over a link, it's gonna pop up negative one pixel. There you go. So that works, but we still have a little issue here with um, the width between them, so we wanna fix that. Uh, actually, that is right here in socials A. Let's go margin right, whoops, five pixels. And that might be too much. Nope, it's actually perfect. So there we go. Margin right five pixels. Uh, they, they do a little jump when you hover over them to give you some feedback on your user action. These look good. And so I believe that that is all for this uh, tutorial or lecture. And uh, we'll just do a really quick review. We styled up this whole content section. We uh, set up some columns and we styled up the sidebar, did a little bit of CSS, um, CSS3 on this little effect here. And uh, yeah, that's all for this one. In the next video, we're going to style the footer. So this little sub footer section and the actual footer. And that will be really easy. And then we're on to validating our CSS and reviewing the entire website. So I'll see you in the next video.